This is a response to Bionic Dance's video, Atheist Words Don't Define Me. For me, an atheist is anyone who does not believe in God or gods, end of definition. How you came about it, how it manifests itself, or how it might be, if you changed your mind is irrelevant. What people seem to really be debating is focused more around how each of us defines his own belief relative to our view of society at large and it says nothing about the belief. Having said that, I do have a problem with the lack of belief in God definition that some atheists tend to use, because it tends to be abused. When some atheists say they lack a belief in God they tend to be overly inclusive. My problem is, when they include infants among the atheists and make claims that we all start off as atheists. The reality is that babies have no beliefs in anything and as far as I know are incapable of having such a belief. The inability to have a belief is not the same as the lack of any one specific belief. The null state is not the same as a negative state. Beliefs are learned and typically that means babies take on a variant of the beliefs of their parents and other people around them. Saying babies are atheists is like saying that the default human is a single cell animal, because we all start out that way. While from a narrow point of view you could claim such a statement is true, it is a completely trivial statement and says nothing about what it means to be a human or what babies believe. The problem with thinking we all start off as atheists is that it leads us to the mistaken thought that in order for people to become atheists you just have to prevent them from learning about God. Mankind invented God, spirits, and the supernatural long before science, reason, and logic. For many of us, our collective atheism is due to our exposure to science and knowledge, not the lack of exposure to theists. If you look at history atheism, as a social movement is a recent event tied heavily to technological developed countries. Believing the irrational and supernatural seems to be the human default state for us humans. And despite our invention of logic and science to overcome our natural tendencies of irrationalism, you need only look around you to see all the woo in the world trying to tell us that science is wrong and their magic will save us from it. So am I an atheist? Of course. In fact I am a very strong atheist and I know God does not exist. I am using no rather than belief, because it will push a few buttons but as far as I can tell, to know something is merely to believe it with a high degree of certainty, frequently to the point of not questioning it. I have heard atheists and others use no and belief, as if they are fundamentally different from one another, giving knowing something an almost mystical exclusivity to their version of the truth. I find that they are frequently used interchangeably and say nothing about how or why the user gives so much certainty when using no. As with most thing dealing with what we believe, it's not how we believe but what the specifics of what we believe and all the beliefs that preceded it that differentiates us. So how do I justify my certainty that there ain't no God? First off I do not think that is impossible for something like a God being to exist but I have made a conscious decision to base my beliefs only on the pieces of knowledge we have evidence to support and not what others imagine it to be. It's my no making up shit rule. What this means in order for me to be an agnostic or even a weak atheist, I would have to have some evidence that would suggest that something like a god may or even could exist. And as far as I can tell there is nothing in this universe that would even suggest there is a god or gods. Some may argue that you can't know that God does not exist because everybody defines it differently and somebody might be right. Well in looking for all the commonality among all religions, as a minimum I would expect God and related spiritual entities would have at least intelligence, consciousness, and intent slash purposeful action that has an interest in and ability to directly impact life and humans and exist in some form not easily detectable to us. Notice there is no requirement for a creation myth, mostly, because there is no commonality in creation myths among religions, except, as they share a common heritage, and more importantly I don't really care about creation. We know enough about how the universe and ourselves came about to know, that, if God only existed in our gaps of understanding there is nothing to suggest, that God has any interest in us directly. Notice there is also no requirement for an almighty, omnipotent, all-powerful, omnipresent, infinite super-being, mostly, because any claims of God having such powers is meaningless to us humans. Mankind is completely incapable of knowing, sensing, comprehending, or even visualizing anything infinite. 
Everything we see in life and in science is finite from the age and size of the universe to the quantum behaviors of particle, light, everything. Infinity is meaningless relative to defining God, because we could not ever distinguish between a truly infinite God and one that is merely a poser with powers beyond our ability to comprehend. Notice these characteristics would equally apply to Thor, Jesus, Yahweh, Vishnu, Zeus, spirits of the forest, Mother Nature, or just about any concept of God I have ever heard of. Now you may have noticed that my list of characteristics does include beings that are less than godly, namely humans. True but this list of characteristics is what I use to assess the existence of God by looking for them in what we know through on science and evidence. The resemblances of these characteristics to humans is no mere coincidence, for I find that all gods boil down to some anthropomorphization of something in our reality. And when you look at the diverse concepts of God that we humans maintain, the only commonality is us, what's more the only tangible example of anything with godlike attributes is us. As an attempt to be fully honest I should clarify that in order for me to consider a being, as God and give it all the respect that implies, I would have to have some reason for believing, that is I would need to know, that it was worthy of worship. This comes out of my complete lack of respect for the might makes right mentality that many theists tend to believe, although they will never admit it. So far the worthiness of God part of the definition has not played a significant factor in my beliefs, since there is no evidence that anything like a God exists. Admittedly the worthiness of God does greatly influence my perspective on the morality of most religions. Despite my strong atheism, I would have no problem in believing in God, if the evidence supported it. The reality is I would follow the evidence wherever it led me. I really have no vested interest in atheism, just the truth. So, what would it take to make me believe in God? Well therein lies the crunch. When I look at all we know and what you would expect, if there was a God, my only conclusion is that nothing in this universe would make sense, if a God-like being existed in it. So my answer to what would it take to make me believe in God, would be that as far as I can tell it would take a complete change in reality, both what is and what was. And so you can see where my certainty about saying there is no God comes from. Now given my monologue on my atheism, what do I feel is the significance of being an atheist? To me it's essentially zero and it has to do with how well does atheism represent what I believe. To see the problem all you need to ask yourself what does theism say about what a Muslim, Buddhists, Christians, or any subgroup of theists believes? The answer is of course resoundingly nothing. Theism only defines a single belief about the existence of a god that theists share. So what does atheism say about atheists, only that they share the lack of belief in one single piece of metaphysical nonsense, and that's all. The reality is that it puts no other requirement on the believer and indeed you can find atheists that can and do believe anything. The reality is my beliefs go way beyond the single belief behind atheism, as I believe does much of what is called the atheist community. I consider myself a believer in naturalism, much, as I see many of the people who share the Dawkins, Hitchens, say conversions of atheism and include many who go by the name of free thinkers and skeptics. Per Wikipedia naturalism is a philosophy that posits a particular picture of reality being, and existence that typically excludes the supernatural. But more than just naturalism, most of this atheist community shares a deep quest for knowledge and understanding of the world around us and put a high reliance on science and evidence to help us overcome our individual flaws and constantly move forward. The community shares a strong sense of skepticism, for all things who and is always on guard to protect our beliefs, interests, and humanity at large from the forces of ignorance. The community prizes individualism, diversity and difference of opinions, while embracing activism, teamwork, community and social responsibility. So the big question, is this atheist community a religion? I would say probably, or at least it is heading that way. There is increasingly a well-defined group identity and more vocal community who share a common set of beliefs about the world, themselves, and right and wrong. They are organized in a very decentralized and loosely affiliated manner, and while they do have a few very high-profile spokesmen, most of them get their beliefs not directly from any social organization like most organized religions but rather each person is generally responsible for their own beliefs, and pulls it from their secular education and their experience throughout life. 
Atheist organizations, bloggers, and personalities, spokesmen are increasingly reaching out to the community, supporting and nurturing their perspectives, organizing the fight for a more rational world, providing a voice for the believer and guidance for those seeking the way. So given this growing movement at hand why do I and the rest of the atheist community tend to go by the nondescript nomenclature of atheist? The main reason seems to be that is what theists call us. It also could have to do with the fact that we atheists being predominantly individualistic and a rather small and dispersed minority, found it easier to just accept the name given, even if it doesn't really reflect us. Now as to what alternatives do we have to the title atheist? We could use the existing terms of skeptics or free thinkers, which admittedly I think better represent us but they are frequently open to agnostic and theists and tend to be more associated with a characteristic we share and would not be easily associated with any specific beliefs. We could also come up with a more descriptive variant of atheism like rational atheists or skeptical atheist or scientific atheist or even so of the term being thrown around by theists like new, new, atheist or militant atheist but they have much the same problem as atheism in that none of them really capture that a belief in God is just one of many irrational beliefs we don't accept. I've considered using the name from an existing group, like secular humanists, but even though I would generally agree with their basic tenets and I think they fall within the atheist community but using secular in the tile has much the same problem as atheist itself, in that much of the woo that opposes science comes from the secular world not just the religious. I have considered naturalist, as one who espouses naturalism and used it a few times, because naturalism does do a pretty good job at differentiating me from atheist at large, but naturalist has other non-philosophical meanings and is too associated with tree huggers for my taste. So I have no real answer to what to call myself. So, as a last thought I have been toying with the idea of coming up with an old school name, taking a page out of the theology and name my beliefs after a person. My thought is to call myself a Saganist or Saganite after Carl Sagan. As to why I chose him it's not, because I think Sagan should be worshipped, or that I consider his atheism as some ideal form to strive to, or even that I consider myself the follower of his specific beliefs. I suspect there would be many specific beliefs and aspects of how we view the world that we would disagree over but I'm fine with that and would actually prefer to identify myself with a set of beliefs that are flexible enough to permit growth and change over time. To me Carl Sagan is a great inspiration, a man who lived his atheism in admirable way and an excellent role model. But more importantly he represents a set of atheist beliefs that I would have no problem letting them represent me. Admittedly using Carl Sagan, as the class type, for my atheism is a bit arbitrary, but the reality is so are most names. As to those who might claim that he would not want such an honor, my thought is that he is dead and really don't care now, and as I tell my kids it's good to want thing, it does not mean you will get it. More importantly I suspect the idea of finding a banner for people to rally around in support of those ideas important to him, I think he would support. Let me know what you think.